A good late afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Sage. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. There's no better way to wind down the day than with today's market close commentary. So let's dive straight in. Snapping a two-session gaining streak, the Australian share market ended a tad lower on Wednesday, albeit pairing most of the early losses as investors reacted positively to the largest GDP figures, or should I say the latest GDP figures, though Australia's economy performed better than expected in the June quarter, but the growth slowed down for the fourth consecutive quarter. The ASX 200 closed marginally lower by 0.10% earlier today. The index opened lower and declined as much as 1% ahead of the second quarter GDP figures. But it revered most of the day's losses after data showed that economy expanded by a better than expected 0.7% during the April to June period. The growth in the GDP numbers reduces the chances of the nation recording its second recession in two years. The market breath indicating the overall strength of the market was mixed as 6 of 11 sectors ended in the red zone. The consumer staples sector emerged as the worst performer with a 1.4% loss, followed by consumer discretionary which fell 1.2%. Among others, materials, healthcare, industrial and tech also settled with modest losses. Now, meanwhile, energy sector was the biggest gainer, rising 1.2%. It was followed by the financials, telecom, A-REITs and utilities, which closed in a positive terrain. ASX-listed energy stocks witnessed a surge in the buying despite falls in the crude oil prices. Index heavyweights Woodside Petroleum, Santos, Beach Energy, Ampol and Oil Search ended higher. Brent crude oil futures edged lower on subdued demands after the Ida hurricane hit the U.S. Gulf Coast refineries. And the crude prices were weighted due to the concerns that flooding and power outages in Louisiana will cut the crude demand after the hurricane. And moving on now to the materials space, metals and mining stocks witnessed selling pressures on Wednesday. Sector heavyweights BHP Group, Rio Tinto and Fortescue Metals ended lower. On this note, let's now shift our lens to the top gainers and losers of the day. The top loser on the benchmark index was the Australian natural health company Blackmores, which dropped 6.7% and some of the other notable losers were biopharma major Mesoblast, industrial firm Reese, healthcare firms Polynovo and Promedicus. Meanwhile, aerial mapping firm Nearmap topped the gainers chart by rising 5.1%. Some of the other top performers were aluminium producer Alumina, education firm IDP Education and gaming company Sky City Entertainment. Moving on, let's now focus on shares that hogged the limelight today. First up, the shares of the gold miner Oceana Gold fell as much as 1.95% following an ASX update. The company in an exchange filing said that it has resumed operations at the McRae's and Waihi mines after the New Zealand government ceased COVID-19 restrictions for all regions except Auckland and Northland. The operations were suspended on the 16th of August following the government's directive to implement a countrywide <coughs> COVID-19 alert level 4 lockdown. As per the company, the gold production by New Zealand operations will drop between 4,000 ounces to 5,000 ounces this year due to the two-week-long shutdown along with other strict public health norms. Next up, the share price of supermarkets business Met Cash slipped 2.4% in the intraday trade after it issued trading update. The company's sales dropped by 1.8% for the 16 weeks ended August 15, 2021, as against the same period in the last fiscal. Total food sales also fell by 7.4% compared to the prior corresponding period. However, the liquor sales surged 9.5% during the period under review. And moving on now, shares of the biotechnology company Mesoblast extended the losing streak for the second day and dropped as much as 4.8% on disappointing earnings. The stock plunged 15% on Tuesday after its annual earnings failed to impress market. The company has reported a net loss of 98.8 million US dollars in the financial year 21, while sales revenue dropped by 77% year on year to 7.5 million US dollars. And now let's take a very quick break, but please stay tuned. I'll be back with more of the trending stocks for the day.
Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Welcome back to The Last Trade Show. I'm Sage, you're watching the market close commentary by Calkine TV. Let us now look at some more of those trending stocks for the day. Graphite producer and battery anode material developer Vault Resources saw its shares tumbling as much as 6.6%. The company has successfully raised 5.75 million Australian dollars via a share placement. And the original target was to raise 4 million Australian dollars, but strong demand from the existing shareholders as well as new sophisticated investors, funds and institutions prompted the company to raise the limit of the final capital amount. The fund raised will be used to commercialise the development of battery anode and other downstream graphite products in Europe and the United States. A part of the fund will also be utilised to drive the Zevalivsky graphite business and complete lithium-ion battery cycling test work on the Bunyu graphite. Next up, shares of the medical data and technology firm Hira Med rallied as much as 11% on securing contract. The company said in an exchange filing that it has been shortlisted by Catalonian government's qualification process for technologies in obstetrics. As part of the contract, the company will provide a comprehensive technology solution for obstetrics departments in nine hospitals in Catalonia, Spain, led by the hospital Hispania. Moving on now, shares of the cannabis-based pharma company Altia rallied 15% on signing a 3.42 million US dollar deal with the Boston Beer Company. The Australia-based company said that it is, its subsidiary, Peak Processing Solutions, has entered into the binding agreements with BBCCC, a subsidiary of the Boston Beer Company and WeedMD, to launch a new range of cannabis-infused beverages in Canada. As per the release, the parties have struck the exclusive agreements under a project covering product development, manufacturing and supply of BBC branded non-alcoholic cannabis infused beverages in Canada. And next up, the shares of EBOS Group fell 0.4% after it's completed the acquisition of the Century Medical. The acquisition is supposed to strengthen its presence in distributing medical consumables to the institutional healthcare market, a growing business for EBOS. This was the fourth acquisition in the last 12 months, indicating the company's continuation of its strategy of investing for growth. EBOS is a diversified Australasian marketer, wholesaler and distributor of healthcare, medical and pharmaceutical products. And the shares of lithium-focused Piedmont, lithium dropped 2.5%, also making the news down to 78 cents Australian after it completed a 9.9% investment in Iron Ridge Resources. So in July this year, the company had signed a share subscription agreement and the company has also entered into an earn-in agreement via staged investment in IRR's Ghana lithium project to acquire 50% stake. It believes the investment will maximise its lithium potential in Ghana and help it become the leading lithium producer in North America. And let's move on to the next shares of Silk Laser. Australia climbed 4.2% after it completed the acquisition of the Australian Skin Clinics and the Cosmetic Clinic in New Zealand. The acquisition of the ASC Group featured an upfront cash consideration of 47 million Australian dollars and up to an additional 5 million Australian dollars earn out in Scrip after the acquisition of Silk's current network of 63 clinics gets another 55 clinics. This brings Silk closer to achieving the company's network plan of 150 clinics in the medium term. And the last stock in this list, Medical Imaging Solutions Provider 4D Medical fell nearly 1%, pairing the opening gains. The company has signed an agreement with IMED Radiology Network to commence phase two of a clinical pilot program. IMED is Australia's largest outsourced provider of radiology, having over 200 clinics nationwide. And now we'll just take another very quick break, but please stay tuned as I'll be back with more of the trending updates for the day.
Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us for The Last Trade Show. I'm Sage and you're watching Kalkine TV. Now in our next segment, we'll take a look east towards the Asian market performance. And shares in Asia Pacific region were trading mostly higher on Wednesday, undermining the weak cues from Wall Street as investors digested the factory activity data. Manufacturing activity grew at a slower pace in China, Japan, South Korea and Taiwan as the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted supply chains across the region. Japan's Nikkei was the best performer in the region with 1.2% gains. The market witnessed strong buying despite weak factory activity data and Japan was followed by the Straits Times Index in Singapore, which rose over 1%. In a similar trend, the mainland Chinese stocks were trading higher with the Shanghai Composite gaining 0.85% and the Shenzhen component rose 0.35%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng traded higher by 0.6%, while India BSE Sensex rose 0.2% in the opening deals. Bucking the trend, however, Indonesia's Jakarta Stock Exchange fell 0.7% and Taiwan's weighted index slipped to 0.1%. Let's move on now to the US and Wall Street ended slightly lower in the overnight trade as the sentiment was dented by the weak economic data and investors also remained cautious ahead of the US jobs data later this week. The Dow Jones fell 0.11% while the S&P 500 ended 0.13% lower. The Nasdaq Composite settled marginally lower as well by 0.04%. And in the last segment of the show, let's have a quick look at the crypto market's performance. And the major cryptocurrencies edged higher during the Asian trading. On Wednesday, the trading volume remained thin amidst the overbought conditions, while increasing regulatory scrutiny on the digital assets also weighed on the market sentiment. And while China's central bank has reiterated the perceived risks involved in crypto trading, the U.S. security exchange has yet to take a call on whether or not to approve a Bitcoin-focused exchange traded fund, or ETF. The price of Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, was up nearly 0.5%. The market capitalization of the most popular cryptocurrency inched close to 900 billion US dollars. And meanwhile, Ether, the world's second largest crypto, jumped nearly 8% in the past 24 hours. Among others, Dogecoin, Stellar, Uniswap and Litecoin also witnessed a surge in the buying. Bucking the trend, however, Cardano, the third largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, fell over 1%. And that's a wrap in the last trade. Thanks so much for joining us. Hopefully that's been informative for you. And also for the day at Calkine TV, we will see you tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning, live from Sydney with our first report on the pre-market scenario in our show. And stay safe, take care. This is Sage signing off.